Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, from us here at TRB. We're live. That's how much we love you. No, we're not. I'm kidding. But this is an episode on Thanksgiving. It's our Thanksgiving episode. And we want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there in TRB land. Star Wars fan land. Earth. Whatever. I'm John. Thank you for joining us. 616. Uh, (laughs) I have a glass of wine to celebrate Thanksgiving this, this fine Thursday. Delicious. And I want to welcome Lacey and James, as always, uh, here. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good time to be a Star Wars fan. And we figured uh, we're not going to skip an episode. We don't do that. Well, I mean, we have, but it's very rare we do that. So we're here, we're here to entertain you. And hopefully, uh, if you're traveling and you're listening to us, uh, you get where you're going safely. Or maybe... You know, you have that relative that's been telling you that story every year and you just need to get away and sneak away to another room and and get some TRB on. Either way, we're glad that you're checking in with us. Uh, Or maybe it's even like a Black Friday situation. They're out shopping. They're like, I need some TRB to calm me down from all these lunatics out of the store. Uh, Mm -hmm. Whatever. Whatever's going on. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Discussion show. So we're going to have some cool topics to get Mm -hmm. into here. Um, It's going to be thanks based i guess is the best way to put it um but before we get into anything uh we want to thank you uh to our patrons uh who have been supporting us uh over at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast uh it's been a wild ride so far these uh four plus years we've had this podcast going and uh we have no intentions of stopping and we are uh, just so excited that we have the opportunity to do this and plan for our future because uh, there's going to be a lot of Star Wars content coming out and we want to be able to uh, do shows the best way we can and your support helps us do that and more. So uh, if you're able to support us, uh, go to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Tiers start at just $2 a month. Uh, and as you climb the ranks, uh, you get more perks, benefits, rewards. Uh, there's even mailings, a Discord server that uh, everyone who's in there really seems to love because it's all about loving Star Wars. It doesn't matter what you like, uh, what you don't like, everyone gets along there. And that's mm-hmm. hard to find these days. And we're very proud of that. Um, and that's a testament to our uh, community that uh, we've built. Uh, but yeah, if you're able to, uh, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, support us if you like what we do. Uh, if you can't, that's cool. But if you can, awesome. Thank you all so much. Uh, from the three of us. Uh, James, what are we doing to kick off this Thanksgiving episode of TRB? Well, John, I'm really thankful for one person, Baze Malbus. The Force is with me, and I'm one with the Force. Thank you, Baze. <laughs> uh, this week we're doing... Yeah, he's amazing. Um one with the force uh we haven't done it in a little while but uh we thought we'd kick it off with this particular question here um y- y- let's let's re- let's make up this situation here you have to write you have to invite one star wars villain to your family's thanksgiving dinner which do you choose in hopes to cause the least amount of trouble lacy who are you inviting to thanksgiving so I, my initial response, just because I love him, is Kylo Ren, but I feel like he would cause a ton of drama oh, and would like slice yeah. the table in half. It might be the worst choice. Uh, so I'm gonna go actually with Tarkin because I feel like he's a man of, you know, etiquette, and uh, he has no force powers, so he can't choke anyone. Um, and from what I've seen in A New Hope, he just kind of sits back and enjoys the drama. He might add a little quip here and there, maybe push some buttons, but not enough that someone would die. So I'm going to go with Tarkin. It's funny. The the Kylo Ren answer is pretty funny, too, considering we got, like, undercover boss on SNL, and it just proves that he, like, can't keep it together no matter what. Um, No, that's a... Exactly. (laughs) Tarkin is such a good answer that it was my answer as well. Um, Nice. I'm hoping it's not John's answer. But that was uh, that's exactly what I was thinking is is at worst. um, I mean, at best, I think he would be an interesting guest. I think he would have a lot of really cool stories and intrigue and probably 
Um, if you're, if you're into it, he'd probably give you some lessons on how things could improve, but also that could turn and just be annoying, but it probably wouldn't be any more annoying than say like, uh, your mother-in-law or something that like that family member. <laughs> yeah. Who, who's like, you know, that's not the best way to something that's the most efficient mm -hmm. way. Blah, 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 blah. And you're like, Oh my God, shut up. Like <laughs> stop well, correcting everything his, uh, I do. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're not in the military. The yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think that Might be a foul uh, stench, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, John, what is what would be your one person that you would invite? Tarkin. No. I'm <laughs> uh, Job of the Hut. What? Yes. Job of the if what? You, if you feed him enough, he'll be fine. And he's not. He, he's by himself, so he doesn't have all his like cronies with him. So he feels like a little less like <laughs> it's downtime. It's not crime time. It's downtime. You feed him enough, leave him over there, maybe even outside on the deck or something. He'll, he'll, he'll doze off, leave you alone, and then have someone come with a trailer and pick him up and get him out of there. He <laughs> definitely the smells. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, you think smell. Tarkin has a foul stench because of his <laughs> shoes and whatnot, but. You're oh, inviting, Leia said he has I know, but you're inviting Jabba in. Leia also was like, right. <laughs> That's true. But uh, leave him on the deck, I think, maybe. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, so Jabba the Hut, not Pizza the Hut. This isn't one of those. Uh, not Pizza the Hut. Order in type nights. Not Zero the Hut. <laughs> yeah. All right. Some pretty good choices. Uh, other than the Kylo Ren one, I think that would be nuts. <laughs> um all right we got one more here uh all right what is the most thanksgiving feeling star I'm, wars hold on. movie what hold on i'm just picturing one of like Lacey's relatives being like what's with that stupid helmet and then he just <laughs> rages on the whole family <laughs> like That's one of Lacey's I... sisters is like what's with that or matt <laughs> what's with that dumb helmet <laughs> that's why i wouldn't bring him yeah. yeah like time to carve the turkey <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, oh my god all right here we go what is the most thanksgiving feeling star wars movie john i'm going to start with you on this even though i already know your answer uh return of the jedi oh really not what i thought you were gonna say yeah i feel like it's uh like the Ewoks and the crew come together after having a dispute and they literally dine together and then they celebrate together and drink and be merry and stuff. So I feel like the Endor element of those two factions coming together felt very Thanksgiving to me. Uh, so that's why I picked Return of the Jedi. But nice. Wait, what do you think I was going to pick? Well, let me see what Lacey says. I was going to say Return of the Jedi because it's, really? the, only, Same it's the only movie that ends happily. <laughs> Oh my gosh! With I some thought, type of party. I actually thought the answer seemed um, merely too obvious, <laughs> which I thought was uh, Rise of Skywalker. No, not for Man. me. Maybe for John, not for me. Yeah, I think. Um, I don't know that like. The end of Return of the Jedi definitely has the scene where like the, where like Luke comes back and they you know they do the yeah, hug or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it felt to to me even in that sense it felt like it was kind of um Luke and Leia having their moment mm -hmm. and then Han was mm -hmm. there too and kind of stuff and they were all together and I don't I don't I think that's a great answer. I think there's something about the rise of Skywalker and how like they 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 really survived. They made it. They're back. The, and they're the big um, hooray of everybody and how they are excited is it, kind of the same idea. But I I don't know. I guess just something about like the way they're hugging pick? and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I think it's um, something about the way they're hugging at the end that just makes me feel like they've been through so mm -hmm. much and they finally made it. And there's an association with, I'm thankful that you're here. And also part of that too, comes down to the, how it begins too. like, uh, Ray wants to leave on her own. And they're like, no, the, the we, yeah. go. we are yeah. together. We are family. I think that, um, that is kind of a, a, a family, a found family vibe 
came out of Rise of Skywalker more than other Star Wars, even though that's always been the thing. We've done the episode on that. But I felt like they really drove that home of like these people uh, um, need to be together kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. For, Rise of Skywalker for, for me. For Jedi, my, the the scenes that think of make me think of Thanksgiving the most are when right after 3PO like bails them out and they're like hanging out and he's telling the stories to them and one's hu- hugging Han's leg and like they're all just kind of schmoozing and partying before like the the big battle that like to me feels feels very like Thanksgiving. Well, uh, John, I th- I think I think what you meant to say was how they went and they captured their food. They they <laughs> caught the food in the net and then they they yes. strung it up over the fire. <laughs> That's right. It's it's all very call. clearly Thanksgiving right there. Right. Um, all right, we got another question here. Uh, what character in Star Wars would you trust to prepare the best Thanksgiving dinner? Lacey, um, I have never had to fully cook a Thanksgiving dinner, but I believe you have. I Who have. Who would you either hire to do it or have as your sidekick in this case? Are you a good cook, Lacey? Have we talked about this? That's a tough question because I feel like that's very uh maybe like, some no things. One, no one's gonna say I'm a terrible oh. cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm not a very good cook. Really though? Like I can you grill. would just Let's see. Oh. No. I think I'm a very good cook, but that's oh. my opinion. Um but why are we why are we ordering pizza at celebration? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Because uh, I don't what have a got? kitchen in my room, James. <laughs> yeah, um, and why would, and she didn't why would we ask pizza? you let's, to let's, cook? Yeah, let's not rewrite history here. <laughs> I didn't. Um, all right, my first gut reaction is Ray because we see her actually cooking in the uh, the Force Awakens with the green bread and everything, which is like, mm-hmm. I feel like someone that has been starving would be very good at cooking in the sense of like they'd be willing to make like extra huge portions of food which is what you need on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So I would feel like Ray would be like all in on like cooking everything because she's never had a proper Thanksgiving dinner that she'd be like, I'm doing everything. Let's do this. And she's like, she's very into the studying, which we see in the rise of Skywalker. So she'd read all these cookbooks. I feel like Ray (laughs) would be the one to go with. That's a good answer. Pretty Mm -hmm. solid answer. Well, who was in the holiday special? Who was, was it Poe that was supposed to cook the... Poe was cooking the tip yip. Yeah. Okay. But he was right. doing it in an engine and then he burnt it. Can I and... say, I love that you just said the holiday special and it's Lego now. It's not the old <laughs> holiday special. It's the yeah. New one. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I was thinking for a second it was kind of supposed to be Ray and she like ran away. But it, in fact, she ran away from training Finn. That was what she was running yes. away from, not cooking yes. the tip yip or whatever. Uh, all right, John, who's your pick for uh, Thanksgiving dinner cook? Rio Durant. <laughs> oh yeah, I was trying to think of what characters we've seen cook. He's like an actual, like we've seen him cook, which is funny because it's John Favreau, and he does right. chef, and, and he, does uh, the he chef probably show. insisted like, "Hey, can I get a cooking scene before you kill my character?" So mm-hmm. they're they're around the fire pit. He's like sautéing stuff while talking to Chewie. Like he knows what he's doing. He's having side conversations while he's cooking. Doesn't need to stare at it the whole time. He wants and a he's cantina. Got the, he's got the extra arms. So he can be doing something in the microwave while working on the stuffing, you know, uh, basting the turkey, doing all these sorts of things. And he's talking you about Minoc roasts. He's talking about Minoc roasts. He, the, I mean, the guy who's hanging around, but I'm not that's... putting things. We have two hands, but I'm not putting things in the microwave and stirring at the same time. I'm just saying he can. The option is there. The option Maybe. Is there. And, and Lacey, you're right. He he wanted to start a, a cantina <coughs> somewhere warm, and that involves you know food obviously as well. So I feel like they uh, did that for Favreau. Now that I think about it, oh with the yeah, whole cooking absolutely, thing. Yeah. yeah. He's probably like, give me give me a cooking scene, give me something. So mm-hmm. Rio Durant's my guy, and you know I wish I got more of Rio, but I we got what we got from him, and uh, and that's it. But if I bring him back and have him make me a feast, I'd love to hang with Rio Durant and then curl up in a mm. Wookiee's lap for a nap. Um, I'm going Shmi Skywalker. Ooh. I think that, uh, she, she's a very good mother and given the right circumstances would, would have, you know, cared for 
guests and things like that like obviously her son says i made some friends it's this old guy <laughs> you know like she <laughs> invites like <laughs> random people into the house <laughs> and she seems to be okay with it she they have a meal all prepared there and everything and that is on slave budget let's be honest you know um she didn't complain about you know what food they had to go around or anything like that i think given the situation of saying you know, I want you to come in and we'll give you what you need to, to prepare. Just let us know. I think she would create uh, a very well put together meal and everything would have a lot of heart and um, um, love in it. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of care involved Absolutely. in each piece that she was putting together. I um, It's funny, too. Uh, you usually tie Thanksgiving to like legacy dishes. Like, Oh, that we, we have this every year. This has been in my family and stuff. We yeah. really don't know anything about like anybody, any Skywalker before her or, uh, where her kids are even coming from. It's kind of funny. Like legacy is not really in her wheelhouse, but for some reason I still think of her as a very like, um, uh, traditional, mother cook chef you know baking sure. and taking care of her family and stuff whatever needs done so i would say shmi skywalker that's me um all right we got one more here and that's what star wars character are you most thankful for them existing now a little bit of caveat come on let's let's avoid the obvious luke's and hans and things like that but uh but other than that is there someone that kind of is that b-roll character that you're like i'm really glad this character exists for this reason um, John, I think we're starting with you on this one. So, I'm not I'm not B rolling. I'm saying Palpatine. Um, I, you can't tell the ultimate hero story without a really great villain, and the fact that they got forty years out of that villain, pretty much with one actor. Mm -hmm. And it everything just worked out that way. And just the whole progression, like the best part of the prequels is seeing how he took over. Like it's just a, an amazing story arc that Lucas created. Now, were the prequels clunky? Sure. But the way he set up Palpatine was probably the best story progression out of the prequels, more so than Anakin's fall, in my opinion. And then, you know, seeing him return of the Jedi and then coming back for, uh, for the, uh, Rise of Skywalker. I I just love Palpatine, and he's like my, one of the best villains ever. And I think Star Wars is gonna have a hard time topping that. So uh, I think he's what s stirs the drink and 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 makes us love our heroes so much because they were such an evil person that they had to fight against. So I gotta go with Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Lacey, um, any character pop out to you? Uh, I'm gonna default to probably an obvious answer for me, which is Ray. I think, um. I'm most thankful for her Good because pick. she is a character that I would have <laughs> killed to have when I was growing up and when I was little, uh, to have a woman be the, the main hero and the Jedi in the story because, you know, what I had at that time was Luke and Leia, which is fine. You know, Leia's wonderful. Um, but it's just different. And I think the emotional reaction I had to her grabbing the lightsaber in TFA will never go away. And I think that a lot of women in Star Wars fans feel that way. I think that she's created a space for so many new fans. And as someone that's about to become a mother to a daughter, I'm really excited that she'll get to experience this trilogy as possibly her trilogy, you know, as the newer thing. Um, and just... I think Ray's character really opened the doors for a lot of different characters in Star Wars. And and I'm excited to see hopefully what comes for her character next. I don't think they're done with her at all. Um, but just the fact yeah. that she's inspired so many little girls to like Star Wars. And um, I'm just really thankful for everything that she's provided to the story, which is complicated. It's not very straightforward and that's okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, nice. really good answer. Um, yeah, I mean, th this is a tough question because you start thinking about so many different characters. Yeah, as being yeah. like, man, like uh, you know, the whole thing goes down the drain if said character didn't work very well. And that was part of the reason I I came to the conclusion that I did, which I'm I'm gonna say Yoda. Um, he was on I'm, my list. Good choice. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that 
uh, that it worked because, you know, you think about the, the place that, um, kind of puppetry, you know, and, 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 and the Muppets and stuff like that, they're kind of in right now. And like, I think about other movies that have characters like that and they've never, even though they're good and really interesting, like they hardly ever really pull me into that degree, like dark crystal or, um, stuff mm-hmm. from like labyrinth and stuff. I'm never like really compelled to, um, believe that that character is something more than a puppet. And to me, Yoda doesn't read like a puppet. He reads like a real creature, a real, a real being. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that some of the things that happened with Yoda, like the lines he delivered, um, and the thought provoking knowledge and wisdom that he gave off in the movie just changed star Wars. And I think that he's one of the bigger reasons that the empire strikes back is what it is. And, um, like star Wars, you know, was great in the first one, but I think you got to land that sequel, um, that second, uh, endeavor in order for you to, to put on your legacy cap, uh, and, and head the right direction. And, And the empire strikes back so much fell on it. And they took that huge risk of bringing in a Muppet, you know? And it's yeah. like, how <laughs> oh, the heck sure. How the heck did this work? And when you just think about, like, Star Wars, I know everybody thinks of Luke's and Han's and Millennium Falcons and stuff, but, I mean, how do you how do you not think of Yoda and, like, the legacy of, like, that char- character, that little green toad sitting there, and you're like, <laughs> wow, what a, what a great film series. And it's like, I'm just so glad all that worked, man. What an awesome character. And, and you know, the way he's been incorporated for years, sometimes it's a little bit of a miss. Sometimes it's it's a, it's a big hit. You know, Last Jedi, I think everybody's like, holy crap, man. Say what you will about the movie, but I think most people came out of the Yoda scene being very surprised oh, and excited to yeah. see Mark Hamill right. and Yoda back on screen together. So I got to say Yoda. And uh, that's going to wrap up one with the Force. But we are not done with thankfulness. We're not done with Star Wars. John, what are we talking about this week? All right. Yeah, our discussion, just as uh, you may have seen in the title, (laughs) why we are thankful for Star Wars. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. Uh, So it's Thanksgiving, and we have a lot to be thankful for, but uh, we're going to spend this discussion talking about why we're thankful for Star Wars. So we host a twice per week Star Wars podcast. So it's obvious it means a lot to us and our lives. So let's talk about why we're thankful George Lucas created this franchise that was, is, and will continue to gift us with amazing, fantastical adventures in a galaxy far, far away. Um, the first thing I think of is um, just that part of being a kid and watching this that stays with you through adulthood which is that sort of uh adventure and that escape and you know man life can hit hard sometimes but if you get an opportunity where you can just sit down and pop on one of these movies or the shows or whatever and just go there to that galaxy because every time i throw on star wars i feel like i'm going there i'm going to that galaxy far far away to look in on these adventures Uh, I'm very thankful for that because uh, just being able to forget about any problems or any bills or any stresses you have in your life and and be able to channel that thing that uh, sparked something in you from when you were a kid and you're able to find that in your mind as it was then, uh, just as as though it, you had just experienced it for the first time. And that's how I always feel with Star Wars. There's always something very youthful about it and makes me feel like a kid again. And that's very special. It's very hard to come by. And George Lucas uh, did it and did it well uh, when he created it. So uh, that's where I'm going to start. And we can just you know, we, don't, we can just go around and just have a chat about all different things, whether it's you're thankful for a specific moment, a sound effect or droid or more uh, thematic, whatever. Um, so, uh, Lacey, you, uh, why don't you take it and, and, and let us know off the bat, the first thing that you're mainly thankful for about Star Wars. Um, I would say the number one thing that I'm thankful for with Star Wars is probably this community that I found around Star Wars. I, 
I think that, you know, Star Wars has been a part of my life and it's made me who I am and, and I wouldn't change any of that. But I don't think that it's had the impact on my life like it has for the past like three to four years after being a part of the podcast and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just so thankful to be a part of this and to get to talk about something that I love and then, you know, being creative every week uh, with you guys talking about things that... You know, you got to be like, okay, well, what are we talking about this week? How do we feel about this? And like, just kind of being on top of what's going on. But more than that, just constantly being able to engage with people that love something as much as you do is something that I really thrive off of. And I didn't find that until recently, as in the past few years. So Star Wars has really is the only thing that's responsible for that. Uh, you know, I would like to think that. I I brought that energy to myself, but I don't think that's the case. I think a lot of it is due to Star Wars and, and just liking these movies and shows and books and stuff and then connecting over that and then you go from there. And this community, not just TRB, which is obviously just the best, <laughs> the, the TRB community in itself and all the people that I've met through that, um, but the broader community as well. Like, I think there's a lot of unfortunately negativity and stuff at times but it doesn't for me overpower the positive of what there is out there and the people that are wanting to connect that are wanting to talk about star wars that are wanting to celebrate the thing that they love um and anytime i hear someone online or talking to someone where they're like oh my god i just found this thing and it's so cool and this is this i love it or oh my god i really just got into this it's so cool I, every day that I find someone new to talk to about Star Wars is a good day for me. So I would say that I'm probably the most thankful for this community, nice. the TRB, but also the just like overall online community of Star Wars. I have more friends online than in person, and that's okay with me because that's the world we live in now. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That is really yeah, cool. it's it's hard to miss that point too. Like I was thinking, like, gosh, what am I really thankful for when it comes to Star Wars? Well, it has to be the podcast. You know, it has yeah, it's to be changed my life. Like, like I'm our, a different person than I was four yeah, years ago because of the people of this, who are yeah. commenting on the videos, the people who are sharing and saying uh, best Star Wars podcast out there. You know, it's like that yeah. kind of stuff is just crazy. Uh, I you know I look at our our Patreon and people who are like uh, contributing not mickey dollars you know like as my son would say like real actual money saying like i like what you do here's two bucks a month you know here's five yeah. bucks a month i'm like this is nuts so i mean that's just that's unavoidable in our situation and you know we have to say it because it, it literally is like the best answer um but it is kind of one of those things like we also just want to kind of touch on like what has star wars done culturally you know to ch kind of change our lives and how like sure how things um have manifested because of the property and stuff so it's like it, it is interesting to me like um just an understanding of i don't know where i would be if, if star wars didn't happen but the fact that it did happen and it opened up a whole world of oh this kind of thing is cool like the empire and 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 the, you know what i mean they're fighting and stuff and it became such a um i don't i don't know like the global phenomenon behind it it just everybody every movie you know past star wars has been influenced by star wars and the, everything that we're absorbing now is all because of this thing it's like it's hard to not watch movies and see influence, you know, from Star Wars and go, man, I'm glad Star Wars was a thing because this is awesome. Right. I love right. this, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of a weird answer for me, but yeah, I'm just trying to give it like I'm thankful for like the whole franchise existing because who knows, man, what what kind of movies and what world we would live in if Star Wars hadn't have happened. It'd be just it's a totally different face. Yeah, it's totally true. I mean, Star Wars just existing has impacted my life in a way that, like, it, I was just thinking about this, James, as you're talking of, like, the connections that Star Wars has brought into my life from not just 
who I am as a person, but <clears throat> like, you know, I watched the movie and then I got you know, it, it changed my imagination and how I thought about things and then liking movies. And then from that, I go through school loving movies. So then I go to college for video production and for film. And then from mm -hmm. there, I'm going to events. And then I figured out that the company I worked for did Star Wars Celebration. So I was like, I need to work for them. So it's like one of those things that's like, yeah. you're looking at all the data points of what Star Wars has done for you or what Star Wars has, how, how has it impacted you? It's literally impacted probably every major decision I've ever made in my life. My wedding had Star Wars music in it. My wedding had Star Wars decorations in it. Like, I've made so many Mine choices too. on trips and stuff based on Star Wars and friends that I've made and and career choices and every cr like creative idea I've come up with is usually somehow stemming yeah. from Star Wars. Like even like yeah. when it comes to, and I was thinking of this too before I even started talking. Like some of the 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 visual aspects of it, like creating like um, the rebel logo and the empire yeah. logo, you know, and stuff like that, and like font choices and things like design. When it comes to like how we create things, it's like oh well, you know, I've been absorbing so much Star Wars stuff. This is my influence. So when I am creating content. I'm usually basing it on like something I had seen or some sort and of like visual influence and design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, from from that type of property. And I mean, we'll go yeah. crazy all day if we start thinking about like, oh, if this one little thing in life hadn't changed, like butterfly effect <laughs> right. sort of no, stuff. But I you mean, can't like, do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, would we have any Harrison Ford movies? You know, would would, yeah, that, would right? even be an actor? <laughs> you know, it's like it's crazy sometimes when you think about. Uh, the impact that the just the initial movie had uh, and how it just changed everything it's so crazy yeah it and certainly like for me you know I was doing like uh, fantasy sports writing for very little money as a side job and then you know if Star Wars didn't exist I wouldn't have gotten in with Star Wars news net and then I wouldn't have met you James and gotten involved with the podcast mm -hmm. and then Lacey comes along and then we just like somehow, I don't know why, but somehow people have drawn themselves to us and we've really developed like a seriously legitimate like community, you know, yes, Star Wars Newsnet, of course, but also the TRB uh, community that we have, like the fact that we have uh, fans of ours who are going to be getting into a car together for the first time and doing a road trip to come out to celebration who met via our podcast is lunacy to me. So it's just like, <laughs> like mind blowing. Uh, and the, like all of those things for sure, uh, it just goes without saying like the community aspect and stuff. And yeah, I guess, you know, there is negativity and stuff like that online, but when you really get to know star Wars fans or get to meet someone on a f show floor at celebration and you're talking to a real human being face to face, all that's online. It stuff all goes away, guys. I can't express that yeah, enough for people that haven't been. It means it doesn't nothing. Matter. Yeah, it's like the two bugs, so, dogs barking, and then when their chains break, they're like, "Oh, we don't know what to do now." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's 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 a movie franchise, and sometimes people ask me, you know, or I tell them, like, "Yeah, hey, you have a Star Wars podcast," and they're like, "Oh, wow, that's that's weird," or like, "What do you talk about?" or "What do you do?" Like, and and just Star Wars fans get it, and it's just like this. It doesn't mean like you're an outsider; you don't get it because Star Wars fans are very welcoming. But it's just one of those things, if you like Star Wars, you understand how big it is and its impact. And it's more than just like, oh, that movie that made so much money 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have a convention, a five-day convention just about one movie franchise says it all you need to know about it. Um, so that I am absolutely thankful for. Um, it, it And just like it, to, to be more, more, I don't want to be sappy this whole time because there's obviously a lot of things that, that we love about it that are also... Uh, just fun and you know whether it's you know fun moments in the in the, in a movie or 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 you know a, a quip by han solo or like i just saw an outtake today from empire strikes back that i've never seen before where han's walking down the hallway in hoth and leia goes to intercept him and he just picks her up and moves oh, her yeah i've seen that out of the way and i'm just like i've never seen that before but it's just like little moments like that that put a smile on your face and just, there's so many aspects of this franchise that make me very happy and uh, I'm also thankful for Disney for buying Lucasfilm because, you know, George Lucas said he had, you know, he had ideas for making more movies, but he had also said, and not too long before he sold it, that it's only six movies and I didn't want it to be like Star Trek. 
So who knows if we would have had much more Star Wars beyond the Clone Wars. So I'm very thankful that he did. And also, I guess thankful to George Lucas for being willing to take something that was his from his brain that meant so much to him and to have the humility or humbleness or or lack of ego to say, I want this to live on. I don't want this to die with me. Right. And yeah. the fact that we like this podcast doesn't exist. If Star Wars is just like, we wouldn't be like, so Revenge of the Sith, huh? Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, just like, for the you know, event, you need new stuff to talk about. And the fact that he was willing to do that and that we have all these new shows and all these new movies coming out uh, and that have, have come out since he sold it. So I got to thank, obviously, I'm very thankful to George Lucas, not only for creating it, but also for being willing to let go of it. Uh, that's got to be a really hard thing to do because I don't like letting go of things. And he created the most amazing mythology of the 20th century. And the fact that he was able to let that go kind of blows my mind a bit. But the fact that he did, I am very thankful for because look at what has happened since. I know people, some people don't like it and they only like the George Lucas stuff. That's fine. I respect that. But I love it. So, and, and we wouldn't have been doing this. I wouldn't have known you guys. Um, mm-hmm. so this is, uh, or Val or the site or anything, uh, our listeners, all of it. Um, I wouldn't have gone to a Star Wars celebration probably. I don't know if they would have had Star Wars celebrations if it stopped, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, I just, mean, I, let me jump off that it's really crazy. quick Star Wars celebration. Like you mentioned the fact that there was a convention and I was like, well, it kind of reminds me of, like Star Trek conventions. And then I started thinking like, well, I guess every major property has some sort of like big convention no not really you know i I was like actually that's kind of something that's very specific to star wars and and star trek as well like Mm -hmm. you know harry potter is a huge franchise that has continued those have been pitched james i could tell you right now i've seen the decks oh really pitched yep but the but it but it but what i'm saying is like still to this day no matter when it was in its height or when it was yeah. like done it never has been like a like there very clearly is still community around it you see it in sure. stores i go to hot topic they have the whole wall it's harry potter stuff years after that stuff's great but it's like is there drive enough for so many fans to to have this event Maybe, maybe not, but that's but that's not a question with Star Wars. It's like, yes, absolutely, there is, and it's going to be mm-hmm, five mm-hmm. days this year. It's nuts, um, and uh, you know, and there's still Harry Potter movies being made, and they're they're not doing it, or like uh, Lord of the Rings or whatever. We're getting ready to go on this yeah. next big journey and stuff, and it's like Lord of the Rings has has test of time proven itself. It's there. But there's no big like Lord of the Rings celebration that happens every year that fans are just regularly coming back to it and stuff. Or Marvel. It's like, exactly. And I mean, you could say that that's kind of like Comic-Con and stuff, but even then, those are really based around something so much bigger that Marvel's just kind of jumping in on it. You know, it's part of the celebration, but it's big. Yeah, yeah, that too. It's a Marvel thing. (laughs) But it's like the fact that celebration exists, the fact that there's enough drive every year that you're going to get all of the collectors, all of the cosplayers, all of the um, uh, the people who have been involved in the movies to come back and sign and just they can, uh, there's enough love around the franchise as a whole that they can put it all together and say this is the date it's you know it's may 5th to the 10th or whatever you know um that's not the date <laughs> but i just made it up <laughs> people are like Don't. oh no i booked my flight for know, may like, 25th what, what is it the may 20 <laughs> someone's gonna be to in anaheim 9th? may 5th and they're gonna be like um i thought everybody was gonna be here james baney Baby! said on the podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh no, but I mean, that was a good point when you brought that up. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, that's something absolutely that needs mm-hmm. to be said is that we are lucky enough that um, that everybody's dedicated enough to go and do those events and, and participate in them and stuff. It's crazy. I'm going to go yeah. less sappy, which, guys, it is a surprise right now that I haven't started crying or something at this. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go less sappy, more practical 
Uh, I am so thankful for Star Wars for their technology and the advancements that they've made in filmmaking, as well as John Williams. Those are my two practical thank yous. What I'm thankful for, uh, you know, the stuff that they've done in Star Wars has impacted so many other movies and so many other, uh, you know, just the industry. Look at the volume and what it's done. Um, And I'm just really thankful for it. Yeah, volumes. Uh, all the CG stuff they've done and animatronics and all that, those things that have impacted beyond what Star Wars is. Um, and then, of course, John Williams. Like, where would we be without John Williams? <laughs> like, he's done every song for basically every popular movie you could think of, mm-hmm. won so many awards, and Star Wars would not be what it is without his music. So those are the two kind of more practical things i'm thankful for john you're muted again oh i thought i just unmuted it um (laughs) i red red light red light (laughs) yeah the flashing i'm actually gonna get a new mic i think um (laughs) not sure a little christmas gift for myself we'll see Mm. but i am i'm thankful for uh king features which was the publishing company that turned down george lucas from getting flash gordon's rights Mm. which made him then create star wars that is a good thankful alan ladd jr the uh only person at fox who believed in george lucas and the only reason why star wars was made so he lady Um, gaga that you know all it takes is one person oh yeah (laughs) he lady gaga that Uh, um those two for sure and of course how could i sit here on a thanksgiving episode and not be thankful for the brilliance of lawrence caston <laughs> oh, there it is i was waiting for him to come it, up in my head i thought you were gonna say alden aaron Reich. <laughs> <laughs> i am thankful for alden aaron Reich. i'm also thankful for fans who for whatever reason thought our stupid t-shirt idea was really cool um, because we didn't make the and realized it was more thing. than that and realized it was a celebration and not a yeah. demand and a wonderful way yeah, to celebrate it, a movie that it, deserved the praise it didn't get at the time. It, it really like, I think it got a little lost on, on people as it's gone on and, and gotten sure. bigger over the years that it was some sort of like, you know, release the Snyder cut thing really like, it was like this would be a funny shirt because they're never going to make this movie because it didn't do well and then you know i'm walking around new york comic-con and people are high-fiving me left and right and saying like yeah solo 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 and then all of a sudden like we use the hashtag like james i think was the first one to use it and then it took off and we we're at celebration and we're wearing our shirts and like brian herring's coming up to us to take photos rob Bordeaux. Uh, saw someone wearing the shirt saying like, yes, I, I believe in that. Jonas John pretty much Kasdan. said it on the stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Kazan. And then it just kind of took off from there. And that's when you know you have something that takes, it happens without you forcing it or trying to make it happen. And the fact that fans rallied around it, I'm very thankful for that. Even if they don't wind up making more solo stuff, I'm very thankful for the memories of what it turned into when we didn't realize and the it would fun turn we've into had anything. with it and the people yeah. that have connected with it mm-hmm. and the, the you know friends yeah. we've made from it that's what's most important who cares about t-shirts and other things it's just about for years now we've been able to celebrate this movie that didn't get what it deserved needed people to root for it right yeah. And yeah. it's just been fun engaging with people about it and like I said earlier it's just that community aspect of enjoying star wars in a way that you thought you only cared that much and then you meet someone else and you're like you me me you you okay great and then go from there (laughs) yeah it's it's been a trip like that whole thing and we don't identify our podcast by it but it's certainly one of those things we're going to look back and be like wow that was um whether they make any more or not we're gonna be like wow that was like something special because we we did it in 2018 right off the heels of fans like tearing each other apart over TLJ. Right. And it's just like we you know, when we did the whole like day uh makes a little two happen day thing, I think part of my brain was like, oh, there's gonna be like 
people like hating on it and stuff. And it really wasn't that it was just kind of like, if they didn't like it, they didn't talk about it. And people just got a chance to have a mini online star Wars celebration of that movie. And it was very cool and it was natural how it happened. And I'm very thankful for that. No matter what it ends mm-hmm. up being, it was a very special thing. Very thankful for it. You know, it, it's, it's uh, with the, just to touch on the make solo to happen thing. Like I know that, there are times when I wear like general star Wars shirt or I see somebody wearing a very general star Wars shirt, like just, you know, like this for whatever, like the rise of Skywalker. If I saw somebody walking down the street, I would absolutely recognize it, but I don't always say something to that person. Right. I, I I don't know what kind of a star Wars fan they are, but this, the solo two thing to me hit that right pocket where if somebody saw that shirt and they too were like, oh, I've had that thought. It it allows that connection to be made by two random people on the street wh- where I've seen yeah. it happen. There are so many people that have seen me just wearing the shirt. They don't know the podcast. They don't know anything about it. They just think I'm a fan who also, you know, yeah. has li- a, bought a shirt from some podcast or something, but whatever. But like they see it and they go, yo, that's awesome. I'm definitely down with that. Like, and that connection, that moment that happens to me, it reminds me every time that it happens to me that it happening, it's happening to everybody else who's wearing that shirt when they walk yeah. around just in public or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. I'm make, I've made those connections happen inadvertently through this shirt or this, this hashtag that we used or something. And that is so in a world so that feels so yeah, in a world that can oftentimes, I know for me, feel very isolating, especially recently in the past two years, feel very alone uh, to find that connection just by smiling with someone in a Target <laughs> somewhere. Like, it's just, it's invaluable. You know, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. just wonderful. I, you know, I never, I, I enjoyed that concept so much. I enjoyed thinking about it so much. I the last celebration that I went to, I made that shirt that said, Hey, star Wars. I had that idea. Yeah. Behind yeah, yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. star Wars. I've never really embraced it or anything, but I think that I've, I've always felt there was something to that. When you see the person who is wearing the thing and you want to make that connection with that person on that level, I, I don't know how else to do it other than be like, Hey, star Wars. And that's all you can say. Yeah. Like, Hey, star <laughs> Wars seems like an idea to me. Um, that we can't do, but it all stems back from that connection that you can have when you see um, someone wearing a High Republic shirt, you know, or something. You're like, no one wears High Republic shirts. That guy must know, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. That girl cool. reads the books, you know, he kind of yeah. thing. Like or Ray Buns or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're like you're you the sunglasses. You know the deep cut or something. What? Are you talking about sunglasses? No, Ray Buns. Ray in their Buns. Hair. Oh, Are buns. you making a lame joke right no, now? I, I don't know if he's just confused <laughs> or not. I thought you said Ray Bans. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, I'm not thankful no. for that. That's it. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> that much. Um, no, th- I mean, there's a, there's a lot to this. And, you know, we could go on about, you know, I, 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 I mean, I have to also be thankful for Star Wars Newsnet and, you know, Val. He's just a very, uh, mm-hmm. uh, just humble and generous and, and, and giving person. He never likes the spotlight and stuff. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity he gave me. I got to go to two world premieres for Star Wars movies. I mean, like 15 year old me, like would never believe that. So just I got to be thankful for for Val and Star Wars Newsnet and the whole team there is amazing. Again, that's a community too with the forums and the writers and the teams and stuff. All good people who get along, who all like different things, all mm-hmm. different walks of life from all parts of the world. And it's just a very special thing. And uh, I'm very, I'm proud to be a part of it because there's tons of sites, tons of podcasts and tons of everything. And they're all great at what they do. I wouldn't trade being on this podcast or write for that site for any of it. And I just say that because I'm having such a good Aww. time doing this. So, yeah. All right, enough. <laughs> Macy, <geez. laughs> it's like sitcoms or whatever. <laughs> you, you can yeah. find John on uh, just right. like the movies. <laughs> 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 All right. So listen, 
Uh, let's pick a. How about a scene from Star Wars that we're thankful for? Oh, you I'm gonna first. be lame and, and say idea. the scene oh, I've already Lacey. said. Ray grabbing the lightsaber. Nice. That's the first one that pops to my mind. I've never had such an emotional reaction to a scene like I did with that one. It hit me right in the chest, and it was like one of those things that's like I've been waiting my whole life to see this happen. Because you'll you'll always remember thinking it was it was going to be Luke. Um, I don't even think that because, you know, Kylo Ren was reaching for it. I don't even think I thought it was Luke that was going to grab oh, it until okay. it I flew Oh, I thought you did. His... I did. No, yeah. no, no. Um, I mean, I think that probably crossed my mind at some point, maybe not the first viewing, but a couple of viewings later or like maybe after the fact. In the moment, it just it didn't seem like it was about to happen. But then when it snapped into her hand, it was this thing of like, I have waited my whole life to see this happen. And that sound effect, that whoa, 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 And the music is perfection. Yeah. The music there yeah. that swells. It's just such an emotional thing. And I remember everybody in the theater like gasped and then cheered. Like everyone cheered when she yeah. got the lightsaber. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's the probably scene I'm the most thankful Very for. Very good. James, what do you got? It's tough to pick one. That I mean, for sure. Yeah, I think because I went into this episode thinking so much about, like, if that original movie didn't happen, you know, Mm. kind of thing. That was kind of my mindset. I could pick a million other scenes, I'm sure. But when you asked the question, the first one came to mind is that big, massive, dramatic, like, dun, dun, dun. Dun 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 in the first one, and Death it's Star. Luke, and they're cutting between all the different people, and he shoots it in, and, and they oh, let's yeah. blow this road, get out of here, and you see that Death Star <laughs> explode. I just have this feeling that when that Death Star exploded, it was like Cap saying "Avengers Assemble" or something, or like him grabbing <laughs> the hammer. Yes. Yeah, it just like something about that moment. I feel like every everybody in the audience across you know the world or at least everywhere where it was being released at the time just like in just the same as like Alderaan blowing up but like in a good way like suddenly there was like excitement over the whole world and it was like Star Wars has happened all at the same time it's just this which that's my favorite Avengers moment by the way is him grabbing the hammer so now my favorite moments in two big franchises are people grabbing objects Huh. That's interesting. They, well, to be fair, too, they're calling for objects that fly yes. into their hands. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is there Weapons. like a moment in Harry Potter where a wand flies into his hand? Like, who make this a trilogy for Lacey? Hold on. Let me <laughs> let me come back to me. I'll think of it. There definitely <laughs> is a moment. The snitch. He catches the snitch. Spits it out. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, nothing to the extent of like you thought you thought Ron was out of the fight or something like that. And then he like saves the day because like he no, calls it the, to him or something. Doesn't the last Harry Potter movie, he grabs the wand? Doesn't he Axio the wand? I'm sure something like that. Oh, yeah. my God. It definitely is a thing. Definitely. Um, I've. I've rewatched the first ones a couple times, but I can't ever seem to make it all the way through to five and six and seven and eight, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I'm but sure Lord I of think the Rings, it, too. <laughs> it deserves, yeah, it deserves a good yeah. um, rewatch, like six, seven, and eight, kind of the, the end of that series, because I've probably yeah. seen Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets so many times trying to be like, I'm going to do a full rewatch and I never go through with it. But yeah. Back on back on Star Wars though, yeah, like John, you haven't mentioned your favorite scene yet, but that's interesting your connection there, Lacey. Um, not favorite scene, sorry. Thankful scene for that you're specifically thankful for. Oh man, it is really tough. I feel like I have to pick something original trilogy. Is there because. anything in Is there anything in Solo that just pops out to you? Well, the Kessel Run. Uh, is one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. I feel like they absolutely nailed that, and it's just in, it encapsulates every like genre that Star Wars encompasses. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a romance to it. There's action. There's adventure. There's comedy. There's a little bit of horror, and uh, you know, um, drama. 
and tension like that scene has it all and it's just perfect how they executed that um for something that people have been wondering how yeah how it hurt my thumbs uh <laughs> that is really funny it has it all i love when he goes <laughs> like like rational on a kylak and he's like are they or yeah. aren't they you know? yeah. um but yeah that scene's amazing i'm very thankful for that but if i have to go old old school it has to be the moment i feel like star wars hasn't met the peak of and it's when uh vader speaks to luke when he's in the carbon chamber and he says the force is with you young skywalker but you're not a jedi yet i feel like uh, i that's my favorite movie moment of all time so i guess i am saying favorite but i'm also so thankful for it because it's one of my first memories of star wars when i was watching that with my dad because i don't think i watched I don't remember watching the very beginning of the movie. I remember watching sort of that part and my dad explaining what this laser sword was and who Luke Skywalker was. And we were watching it on like a 12 inch tube TV in my parents' bedroom on a Saturday afternoon. It was on TV. And because my dad wasn't a huge Star Wars fan, but he's seen them all. So he's like, he saw that I was interested and he tried to explain it the best way he could. So he would say things like, laser sword right? and that's luke skywalker and he's the good guy like a, a very surface way of explaining something to your kid but because i was so young i got it that way where whereas if he tried to explain it to me as a star wars nerd i'd be like what what are you talking about so i'm I'm thankful for that moment and that scene because i feel like that's that was my introduction to star wars and to this day i still feel like the way that shot with the fog and the lighting and the color palettes and that that line but you're not a jedi yet it's just very sharp very clever and uh it's just a perfect thing and then luke turns and looks at his father uh in, in, in knowing he's about to you know not knowing he's his father but knowing he's about to duel this person uh just amazing um you know one person to throw out there too like because you threw out John Williams earlier, and I think you know there's a lot of people that deserve a lot of credit, but and um, this is someone who I don't think should be overlooked, but uh, Dave Filoni, as well. Like mm-hmm. I'm so thankful for that person existing because there are a lot of people who really like Star Wars who got jobs working at Lucasfilm and putting everything together, but I feel like he has made such a big change on how we even want our star Wars stories to go. Like, I feel like you're talking about a guy who was involved with like the clone wars, which, you know, at the time, like I'm sure people were watching it and, you know, it was interesting, but nobody would have ever thought that there would be a person involved in that show that would like, become the de facto like i want that guy to to run everything i want that guy to be the one that tells all of the stories um because of this show that they're putting together and over Mm -hmm. time you know he did this and then he did the next thing and then he did the next thing and he's proven himself time after time uh, you know that i think you're just like man where where would star wars be at if if it wasn't for dave filoni like if he wouldn't have taken those shots or taken the job or if he, maybe if he was just a little bit more casual fan, he just didn't care as much, you know, um, had that person not existed. I, I don't know what the landscape of star Wars would be like. I'm sure in some way, shape or form, we'd probably be fine, mm-hmm. you know, but it's, it's really interesting now looking at the Mandalorian and looking at Ahsoka and looking at like how we, how, Ahsoka could be so much more, but what do we want it to be? We want it to be Ezra and Sabine and Thrawn, you know, uh, a live action retelling of these characters that Dave Filoni created. He's he's almost like closest connection to George Lucas. too. That's what I was going to say. It's like the second coming of Lucas or something. It's weird. Um, the way we kind of, um, need to be aware of, of just how much he's changed star Wars and where we're at now because of him. And you got to think, like, you got to wonder, like, when he sold Lucasfilm to Disney, he, like, told them, he's like, you keep him around and make sure he becomes a big part of this because Mm -hmm. he is my understudy. And I don't Mm -hmm. think they mince words about that. 
That, I mean, he was his like understudy to like you see all the behind George the scenes like, of the Clone Wars. He's stuff. like the son I never had, and all of his kids are like. <laughs> and well, well yeah and our, all his kids are adopted too so they're probably like come on Dad. yeah like come on yeah right but uh no i agree with dave filoni i i think he's very important because as, as you know and i asked this question to anthony daniels like the further and further we get away from the originals and you know one day george lucas is gonna pass away hopefully in a very long time but the further we get away from that the further we get away from like his intention, right? But if you have someone who's connected to that on a one step connection, uh, that I think eases the mind of fans while at the same time, he is also moving us forward. It's not just this Mm -hmm. whole, let's be nostalgic all the time. He's taking risks and doing things. And like, uh, so I think it's a good balance, but he, every time you, for some reason, I I don't necessarily love all the things Dave Filoni has done, Mm -hmm. but I think Lacey and I agree on this. Every you don't time, love all the things George has done either. True, true. But every time you see an interview with Dave Filoni, you're like, yes, yes, that, mm-hmm. you know? He's the one that he, always trends after interviews. He's the o- always the one that people clip quotes from. And it's always and, simple. Yeah. It's always like, mm-hmm. it's about hope. And it's about children knowing that they can always be good and to do the right thing. And it's like, right. yes. Yes, even even you know? weird like bold things okay so like w- anticipation of the mall uh versus obi-wan in rebels or something like that and we all see it and we're like what the heck was that and then we see like dave talk about it and like he's like well you see when a samurai and then like five minutes later we're yeah. like okay <laughs> like or like you know, yeah. like, like when, when taylor gray told us like he's like you guys you, have, you, you don't understand dave like with like he'll just come up to you and say that i'm like oh my god like that interview, I felt like that was the closest we got to have a conversation with Dave Filoni, even though Lacey met Dave Filoni and just said, you know, I love your work and stuff. We talked but, about sandwiches once. Yeah. <laughs> I had to walk him to the stage for a panel and we were walking and I was like, so did you, did you have lunch? <laughs> It's like when you're looking for anything to say at all. <laughs> and he was just like, no, not really. We were just talking about sandwiches. He's like, you know if they have food back there? I was like, I'm pretty sure they have food behind the stage. He's like, that's cool. How's your day going? I was like, good. How's yours? He's like, good. I opened the door for him. He went to the sandwiches. It was a good time. And then years later, I was like, hey, I love your work. And he's like, get away from me. <laughs> I remember him just being like, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's probably he's he probably had a few drinks he was at that bar when we got there yeah he was he i'm, I'm just joking he was very nice it's no, just really is. funny because yeah, it was li- nice. it was yeah. literally the end of the night it was like 2 a.m he was like i appreciate what you're saying to me but like he's yeah, like totally. i love you oh, i like- was not like that i was not <laughs> no, drunk that I'm night kidding. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding night before maybe um, but not that night <laughs> so i mean we can go on uh for a very long time i know we're up on an hour here and you know uh we like to try to cut these around this time and we have more to get to here but um why don't we try to close it out with any you know final thoughts obviously the caveat being here we're not gonna be able to touch on everything we're thankful for for star wars but we like to think that we touched on a bunch so um james any uh your, your final thoughts on this whole idea this whole discussion being thankful for star wars uh before we uh move on um, I mean, th- this, this conversation is definitely something that I think like we could, we could have this exact podcast every year for Thanksgiving for many years to come. And we could probably never replicate the same one twice and um, still yeah. talk and about it, the same things and come up with different reasons. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It, it's one of those things that I feel like Star Wars just is never ending. And, um, you know, one thing we mentioned too is like the fact that we have the community that we have. Like, I was thinking too, this is this is one of those good episodes um, where you can, like, if we when we tweet it out or whatever, like, it would be a good quote tweet to say, like, I'm thankful for Star Wars for this reason, and you know, connect it back to the show as as like a way to share um, the fact that you're in the community and stuff like that. That'd be a good kind of easy way. Um, cause you know, not, the topics that we talk about are always pretty diverse, uh, you know, different for everybody, but this is kind of something that e- every person who's a listener or follower of the podcast is going to be thankful for star Wars in some degree or, or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I think this would, that would be a good way to, to share this week. We're letting um, us know in the comments the too. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 
but yeah, that that's what I got. I it just I think it's it's never ending, and that's I think just um a really good reason to be happy for it. You know, thankful for it. Nice man. Lacey, any final thoughts? Uh, I'm just very. I'm saying uh, because in my head while I was saying uh, I was like, don't start crying. Uh, <laughs> I <laughs> just think that you know. I could never thank Star Wars or George Lucas enough for what they've done to me in my life in the sense of like who I am, what I've accomplished, what I will accomplish eventually, where I've been, where I'm going, where I am right now. Um, and I'm lucky to have it in my life. Mm-hmm. Nice. So that's why I said, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, no, I hear you. Um, yeah, there's a lot to this that it's like anytime I talk to, you know, whether it's coworkers or my family or some friends who may not be big Star Wars fans and they're like, how's the podcast? And they talk talk about it like it's like a silly hobby or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 I don't get too into it with them when I talk about it. I just say it's going really well. You know, we, we did this, we did that. We had this person on and it's been a great ride. But... You know, we do re- work really hard at it, and it's definitely something I put a lot of heart into. And I think what keeps me going are when there's people, like, you know, there have been people who said, like, they did chemotherapy treatments while listening to our podcast, or, you know, we got them through dark times, and people have said that to us. And It goes both it, ways, by the way. You guys have gotten yeah, us through dark yeah, times, yeah. too. Yeah, without question. And t- right now, you guys are helping me get through some tough stuff and it's just uh it 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 is a movie franchise and it is a podcast about a movie franchise but it is more than that and it's uh brought us together it's brought a a community together uh i think it brings fan bases together Uh, i'm saying just the collective of people doing this sort of thing and uh just hearing people say that what we do means a lot to them uh keeps me going doing this because it is a lot of work even though it's fun for us we put a lot of time and heart into this thing and hearing that people enjoy it so much uh, just fuels my engines at all times. Uh, so I uh, just want to thank everybody who has reached out to express that because um, there is sometimes negativity out there and, and people try to knock you down and stuff. But knowing that people believe in what you do and like what you do and uh, support what you do is amazing. So thank you to everybody out there. Um, and uh, it's nice to know that us talking about a space opera franchise created in the 1970s uh does something for you and uh so thank you um all right but we're not done yet because now we do have to hear from some others so lacy uh why don't you steer that ship for us yeah guys it is time for resistance transmissions <laughs> so every week john puts up a crazy wacky situation on twitter and you guys give your answers at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. Now, I'm assuming because this is a very lovely episode, it's not crazy. Uh, I don't think it is. Anyway, so the scenario is, what are you <laughs> thankful for? Kylo Ren is for? wearing polka dot pants. <laughs> yeah, what, what color are the polka dots? Uh, what are you thankful for about Star Wars? See, that's lovely. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. First up is Anthony at Anthony60957. 284 which is his last name so way to get way to get your handle i guess guess at anthony was taken (laughs) yeah all right anthony just getting around a million times over (laughs) he said i'm thankful to have something that i my kids and my parents can all enjoy together that's lovely oh three generations Uh, my parents don't like star wars at all which is hilarious so all my friends that meet you know, my parents eventually are like, so how did this happen? My parents were like, we have no idea. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. Uh, so that's really fun. Uh, hopefully my daughter likes Star Wars. Uh, my luck, she won't. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, remember when I'm cool? And she'll be like, no, you're not. <laughs> I still don't know about Bennett. He may or may not. I, yeah. I don't know. It just I makes me laugh. kind like- of likes the idea of BB-8, but like, I don't know. You know? People just like make jokes, you know, like, oh, your daughter's going to love Star. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. I don't know. I, but I'm not going to push it on her. Like, if she likes it, she likes it. But I just imagine she's going to be like, mom, you're so lame. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, next is Joey Sack, at Joey Sack. What up, Joey? He said, the stories I've watched, read, and listened to, the lessons I've learned, and the friends I've made along the way. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm going to try well done, to not Joey. say all after every ep- like answer. So, sorry. I, that ends there. <laughs> all right. Next is Joker at Espionage Joker, who said, I'm thankful that Star Wars gave me the best childhood I could have asked for. That's cool. There you go. Oh, this is going to be so tough not to say all after everything. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized. All right. Next just is change Cam- it to like something that we know is a code word. So say like pickle or something. <laughs> pickle. Next is Cam Ray at Cam Ray. What up, Cam? How's it going? He said, I'm thankful for the family aspect of Star Wars that has brought so many memorable moments between me between my kids and me, and it has also brought me many new friends around the world who I consider to be my found family. (laughs) I'm also thankful to create and share my stupid Star Wars semi-productions. Nice. I love that. Next is Tampa Movie Guy at Tampa Movie Guy. What's up? How you been? How's it going? Gary. Long time no no hear from you. Uh, He said... I am thankful we will never have to endure another 16-year period like 1983 to 99 where there was no new live-action Star Wars. Same That's here. That's a good point. Yeah, we did mention that in the episode, but we're thankful. Actually, John mentioned Disney, Disney buying yeah. it, but I don't think we really got to that end point where it's just like, which now means we have regular Star Wars content you know, yeah. on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Double C at Double C or uh, Double underscore C underscore twenty one. What up, Double C? He Chris. said my top four are TRB, Galaxy's Edge, The Book of Boba Fett, The Ban- The Bad Batch, plus hashtag Make Solo Two Happen. Wow. wow, that's technically five, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are great. Uh, Thanks, next Chris. Is- destination hoth at d hoth podcast what's up they said aside from great entertainment star wars taught us that we are not defined by our beginnings but by who we choose to become oh my god that's awesome so whatever you (laughs) so no matter who you are you can make a positive impact on the world i agree very nice anyone can choose to be nice at any time and be a good person so Star Wars community, you can choose to be nice. <laughs> yeah. Or right, kill everyone next... and take over the galaxy. <laughs> that too. <laughs> next is Whichever. Rez at Real Rez Ludub. What up, Rez? What's up, Rez? He said, I am thankful for Star Wars because Star Wars has been my bestie since before I can remember. I got that. I get that. Uh, Star Wars has <clears> been there for me when things got tough. Star Wars has never let me down. Never, ever let me down. Simply said, Star Wars saved my life. No question about it. That is lovely. Wow, Rez. It's yeah, really man. true, though. Huh. I mean, John talked about it earlier. The escapism of it, the just constant, like, kind of friend aspect of this, like, imaginary <laughs> franchise in a galaxy far, far away. It's just the comfort of it is so wonderful. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Valerie at Valerie Go Go One. What up, Valerie? She said, I can always count on Star Wars to make me happy, and it never fails to put a smile on my face. I'm also thankful to be a part of an awesome trb community hey can i get one all? thanks valerie oh valerie right. <laughs> just one all right star wars thrifting at star wars underscore thrift hey silver how's it going she said i'm thankful for the resistance broadcast for being my first ever star wars podcast to get me to introduce the star wars community yay right, i would yeah. not have been able to create my own star wars content had it not been for the you lovely three and a bunch Aww. of our listeners brought up the fact that Star Wars provides a feeling of hope, so we picked a couple to showcase that sentiment, which were... Oh, this is from us. Sorry, that I thought that was from Silver. <laughs> this is the way this. Silver, Sorry. thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Silver. If you guys are interested in, like, thrifting and, stu- and cool stuff like that, definitely check out Silver. She, ha- she finds, like, the craziest stuff, by the way. Yeah. Like, she's in that, like, perfect pocket of California that she finds, like, retro Star Wars stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so this sweet. is a separate thought, not Silver. Silver did not say this. <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of our listeners brought up the fact that Star Wars provides a feeling of hope. So we picked a couple to showcase that sentiment, which were. So hope was a very common theme. 
Uh, yeah. JT yeah. at sixth string QB. Is the quarterback the sixth string? That that means sixth there's string five quarterback. other quarterbacks better than him on his team, and he's the sixth best. Aw, so JT, if you're my number one quarterback, fail. JT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right jt said this is going to sound corny but i feel like one thing i appreciate about star wars is that it offers hope love that not corny not no. corny and you are our number one quarterback Jamie. in a lot of ways it's JT. kind of the point so if you think it's corny then star wars is corny because that's kind of the point i like it uh and last but not least is joe Ritchie at darth mucky what up joe he said it is an easy question for me hope there's always hope in Star Wars. It is a positive message for all fans. I could not agree with you more, well done, Joe. Joe. Well done. Guys, thank you so much. Again, if you want to be on the show, make sure to follow us on Twitter at RBATSWNN and look for the <clears throat> situation. Back to you, John. All right. Thanks to everybody for listening, watching, being a part of TRB. It means a great deal to us. Make sure you are subscribed on your preferred audio platform <clears throat> or YouTube, youtube.com slash Star Wars News Net Videos. Um, maybe by now we've passed 7,000 subscribers. If so, thank you to everybody. Onward and upward to 7,500 and then 10,000 and hopefully more than that. But thank you uh, to everybody. Wherever you take in TRB, we appreciate mm-hmm. it very much. Um, I want to say a special thank you to our uh, Patreon generals. Uh, so I'm going to go through that now and as well as our Spice Runners. Uh, Carmelo, Andrew Saleli, Jeremy Myers, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Paul Olson, Jay Couchins, Oliver Lewis, Frank Grande, Haz Aslam, Joe Ritchie, Darth Hurricane, John Charlton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Joey Mayfield Stewart, Nathan Shank, and Val Trichkoff. Generals, thank you so much. Our Spice mm-hmm. Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C, Chris, Kendall Gellner, Ryan Wara, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, and Thomas Hennessy. Thank you, Spice Runners. We appreciate it so much. And everyone who supports us on Patreon, like we said earlier, it means a great deal. Thank you all so much. Uh, StarWarsNewsNet.com. That's where you want to go for all of your Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Johnny Hoey on Twitter, uh, Star Wars NewsNet, and movie podcast just like the movies on all audio apps. Lacey? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. James? Um, I don't know if I'll be on Twitter or Instagram at Myra Trunks today, but I will be eating a large slice of pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. And macaroni and cheese, I'm sure. Oh, definitely mac and cheese. Matt said he hated right. pumpkin pie, and then I gave him a pumpkin empanada from Trader Joe's, and he's like, this is delicious. I was like, this is literally inside out pumpkin pie. Is that the <laughs> is that the 100% go-to for you guys for, for pie? Or is it like pecan or like chocolate? Oh, I don't like pumpkin pie. I apple. love pumpkin pie. You, apple? apple pie. You don't Matt's like pumpkin pie, guy. though? I don't, I don't like pumpkin pie. Man. Mm. John doesn't like bacon. He doesn't like pumpkin pie. Just I don't. like season eight of Game of Thrones. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, whack um, <laughs> don't even get me started on the pineapple versus ham debate <laughs> for another day everything i love john everything i love he hates yeah er- everything i do i do it for you brian adams <laughs> um all right so thanks to everybody happy thanksgiving uh we hope you have a safe and fun weekend whatever you're doing um be well and we'll see you monday morning with another episode right here on the resistance broadcast so we'll see you around kids Thank you.